Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sudarshan Varma. I'm a postdoc at the University of Arkansas, working on developing decision support tool for dairy and swine menu management system. So in partnership with the uh, University of Nebraska Lincoln, University of Missouri, Penn State, and uh, it's been funded by USDA NIFA. So, so I'm going to start with the uh, general uh, pictures to why we are meeting today. So to start with like uh, human civilization started with Stone Age, then uh, we came across like Ice Age, then we saw like beautiful like poetry golden age, then advanced space age, and uh, now we are dealing with garbage. So the reason why, why we are meeting with like nutrient pollution or like air emissions or like whatever we can call it. So having said that, like uh, today's my topic will be on like menu management stuff. So uh, currently there are like 9.5 million dairy cows and uh, 75 million uh, pigs currently in the United States. So causing uh, like leading to higher menu generation. And also uh, US EPA reports like uh, 640, uh, 628.6 million metric tons of CO2 emissions through the agriculture activities. That is almost like 9.6 percentage contributor from the other activities. It could be like mining activities or like waste dumping and also from fossil fuels. So out of these like 9.6 percent, 40 percent of these emissions are coming from the livestock industry. It could be from the entry emission or it could be from the menu management stuff. So therefore, it is very important to identify sustainable livestock and uh, menu management practices. So, so the solution is like systematically selecting the menu management practices that can provide uh, environmental benefits, but also accounting for the local constraints, like profitability and uh, certain like local farming practices. But as said, it's not very simple. There could be like significant challenges associated with that. But however, all these factors could drive or appropriate selection of menu management practices and uh, this could influence the decision making. So coming to the general menu management system, like with the uh, like extensive literature reports, there are like four components which could be like very essential for this one. So those could be classified as a housing and menu collection or like processing uh, steps and uh, treatment and the final land application. <clears throat> so coming to the first component of the housing and uh, manure collection system, okay, we consider this as the most important step because not all the animals are being enclosed. It could be like a different housing system. It could be like freestyle barn, tie stall barn, or compost bedded pack, or open like uh, feed lots. So depending on the housing system, the manure collection system could change. So that would finally affect the final manure properties. For example, it, in case you use like a flushing system, so you'll be using like 50 gallons to 200 gallons per head per day. So which finally affects the final total concentration. In case of a scrape system, the final concentration of manure would be like eight to 10 percentage. So it is very important to understand the housing system, what we are targeting, and also like uh, what kind of uh, like cleaning mechanism we are employing. So that is more important. So and coming to the treatment methods, there are like extensive literature data or all, and also the extension uh, reports that are available, which can provide like uh, higher treatment efficiency uh, methods. So coming from primary separation or like uh, biological treatment methods like storage pond, lagoon, or anaerobic digestion. So the, we have like a lot of literature like throughout the websites. So we can easily find information like which treatment system we can employ for our farm. So as I mentioned, like each individual farms could be different and we can employ these treatment methods to our farms. And also like we have like advanced treatment technologies coming up. Like we have like vendors where we are into, like we are having a survey to like install the advanced treatment technologies. Also like these uh, data are available. And uh, so the final component, as I mentioned, like the menu application. So it's not about like once we have the menu after like 60, like six months or like after one year. So we can use a tanker methods or drag hose methods to land apply. However, it's, it depends on the distance, how we apply the land. So more the distance, the cost increases. So even we have like more detailed information, uh, how we can save the cost or many other components. So being said with, since we have all the literature available online or like, you know, many uh, ex uh, extension reports. So we have all the data for collection, storage, treatment application. We have everything available, available in hand. And also like, we know like many components like economics. So when we talk about the profitability, it's not about like a single factor. So it could be capital cost operating, like cost savings, fertilizer value. There are like many sub components in uh, like considering the economics. When coming to the environment, again, there are like many environmental impacts. It could be like a carbon footprint, energy footprint, land, water footprint, et cetera. So 
and also like when we, when we when we want to install any technology we want to know like what is the reliability of the technology and also like what is the history of like performance the positive performance of that so even though we have like extensive knowledge on like what kind of technologies are available and what we want to install still we are we are not able to like uh, make a final decision like which manure management practice is good for our farm so that's why like we have, we have uh, like come up with like using decision support tool in uh, like you know accumulating all these results and uh, coming up with a final decision so decision support system in our like tool what we, what i'm going to present like we are using like heuristic based decision support system so it it allows like it uses the like, analytical hierarchy process where as I, the different components what i mentioned earlier like capital cost operating and different environmental impacts i'm we are trying to like aggregate all the results into like one component and we are allowing those factors to make the final decision that's what we are trying to do in our project so like following up the same thing like as i mentioned like what we are trying to do with all these uh, reports so we are developing a tool like which has like a four major components one is like uh, we are we are we are having the user inputs that for example as i mentioned like earlier like where we have all the farm information like how much of water is used for cleaning like what kind of treatment technology we are using those are kind of the user inputs and we know how much of waste is generated and also we know like different treatment processes so that is our uh, first component and we are performing the like uh, mass and energy balance for these treatment designs like we are performing an example of a certain farm and we are coming up with all the cost benefit analysis and also we are doing the life cycle impact assessment to find the environmental impact of that particular uh, farm scenario once we have all those results we are using the analytical hierarchy process to do the decision making and also we have like uh, background programming happening to finalize the, these results <clears throat> so as i mentioned like how we, we, are, we are planning the farm designs within our tool so if you see on the right side like uh, so this is one farm scenario like how we wanted to like generate a scenario for example in this particular farm we are using a flushing scenario and a sand lane where uh, sand bedding is used as a sand is used as a bedding once we remove the sand then the manure water is stored in like lagoon and finally it is the effluent is land applied and also like sludge it could be land applied every 5 years or 10 years and also we use uh, like uh, the effluent to be recycled for flushing so we are considering this could be one scenario likewise we have developed like 20 to 25 modules within the scenario within our tool and also these 20 modules can be like multiplied into like 60 variables because for each scenario we might be using like tanker for land application or we can use a drag hose so when we use these two different components again the cost or the environmental impact could change so this is just a background like what's happening behind the tool and also if you see on the cleaning methods we have uh, like a uh, flushing system or scrapes, scraping systems within these modules we have uh, designed within that and also we have the options for using like sand as bedding or organic like sawdust as bedding and coming to the technologies we are we have used like storage pond lagoons anaerobic digestion and different solid liquid separators it could be like inclined slope or uh, <clears throat> rotary dump screen separator and we have screw press and uh, centrifuge so likewise we have surveyed with the vendors and we have the updated information so we are using those uh, mechanical separators and the updated information in our tool and also we have like composting and membrane system as one of the treatment technology and so like and all, we are using like ipcc gas emission uh, factors to calculate the environmental impact and as i mentioned like the decision making we are using analytical hierarchy process that i will explain in the further slides so once we have designed all these uh, like uh, farm scenario modules we are uh, doing the mass and energy balance like how much of water is being generated and what is the energy calculation like if we, uh, like the pumps used for the water recycling or like if we want to use the tanker method like what is the gasoline usage for each 1 miles or 2 miles so we are calculating these uh, terms within that and uh, once we have the gas emission using ipcc we are uh, employing the life cycle impact assessment method like using the within the farm boundaries and also the upstream credits so we are using a uh, sima pro software to find out the environmental impact so and uh, coming to the decision algorithm as i mentioned like we are using analytical hierarchy process so the analytical hierarchy process is one of the multi criteria decision making developed by sati is a mathematician so in this analytic hierarchy process the advantage is that so the process uses pairwise comparison 
method. So determining the priorities of the criteria and sub criteria. So the, what is mean by criteria? For example, when we talk about the menu management system, as I mentioned earlier, for me, like for example, environmental impact could be a major criteria or ec uh, economics could be a major criteria or technology. So what we can assign these as a major criteria and within those major criteria that could be sub one. For example, as I mentioned in economics, capital cost is a major point or operating cost or cost savings. So likewise, we can allocate these sub, uh, sub criteria for, for the main, main criteria. So once we have allocated all these uh, criteria and sub criteria, the analytical hierarchy process has a relate, relative pairwise comparison where we can ask the user to allocate their importance. For example, out of these th three criteria, we can ask the user, what is more important as a farm owner for you? So they can tell, okay, for me, economics is more important or no, I care about the environment. So the user can allocate their point of importance for these three criteria. So once they allocate their percentage for criteria or even for the sub criteria, this is how the pairwise comparison happens behind the screens. So that's how we have designed the calculations. So for example, in criteria A, we can allocate 70% for the percentage importance for criteria. And those 70% can be distributed along with sub criteria. So it's kind of a matrix calculations. So we, which leads to the eigenvectors. So the advantage of this is the percentage what the user has allocated will be evenly distributed. So that is one of the advantage of using the matrix analysis for the AHP ranking. So, so coming to the tool outlay, so we have like uh, the welcome page, just it's like uh, the, what the tool, the information behind the tool and coming to the user interface. So we are asking uh, like initial set of questions to the user. So even though there could be like 100, 100 of questions which can, we can ask for the user, but we have limited to like 10 to 15. I'll tell you the reason why. So we start with asking the user about what kind of, like which state uh, the farm is located and uh, what is the number of the herd size and how, what kind of bedding they're using and how much of water they use for cleaning. So also like the reason for asking the state is that like uh, for each state, the, because we are using many different treatment system for Lagoon, we are having a free board volume. So depending on the state, the rainfall inches could change like every year. And also the cost for electricity or like gasoline could change for each state. So accordingly, we have set up our uh, calculations behind the, within the tool. So once we have all the user in, input information, we have the user data page. So the user data page, is like where we have like almost like thousand variables within the user data page. For example, like in case of like flushing water system, we know like with the literatures we have like uh, the values ranging from 50 gallons to 200 gallons of water. So what we have done in the user data page, so we have given the minimum range of 50 to the maximum of 200, and we have a default the within the within that range. So whenever the user uh, enters the data, we are validating the information to stay within the minimum and maximum output. So if it exceeds the limit, so we'll try to use the default value. So, so that's a flag we have within the user data page. So likewise, we have for all the 200 to 300 variables. So once the, the, the user input information passes the first page, so we'll go to the decision algorithm. So here, uh, this, uh, the drop downs what you see on the right side. So that's where we are asking the user, like out of three criteria, it could be cost, environment or the technology. We are asking the user to compare one against the other, another. So it could be like how much of importance is the cost against the environment. So they can use the drop down cells. So while uh, using those drop down cells, you can see the pie chart in the below. So for maybe it's not like clearly seen. So for example, the, the blue one, the pie chart is like, according to the selection, what they've made, uh, they have uh, selected like 70% importance they're given to the cost and 11% and 11% uh, is given to technology and environment, which means the cost is more important. So profitability is more important for this particular farm scenario. So likewise, likewise they can also allocate for the sub criteria. So using the drop down cells, what, which we are uh, presented in the tool. So they can distribute all the weighting allocations for like capital cost, operating cost, and also with the how much like carbon emissions or land, uh, land usage or energy footprint. So they can allocate the percentage of importance through all these uh, criteria and sub criteria. <clears throat> okay. So once we have this percentage, so we'll be using uh, the weightage in our final results. 
So coming to the sensitivity analysis part, as I mentioned, like in our uh, user interface page, we are uh, limit we are limiting our uh, like user input questions to ten to fifteen. The reason is that like uh, for each farm, there could be like hundred hundreds of variables within that, but we can't ask all the questions up front. So what we are trying to do is that so we are doing uh, like sensitivity analysis. As I told, for each variable, we have minimum to maximum range of, of maximum range. So we are using those information to calculate against the final results. So we are doing the sensitivity analysis where we are varying the minimum to maximum output and we're trying to do a plot like this. So wherever we see a, like a positive correlation with the results, we are, we are trying to use those information to ask upfront in the user, user data. So just to give an analysis like how we are doing the sensitive analysis. So coming to the, coming to the overall uh, testing system, so once we have all the inputs from the first, like the first page, <clears throat> so will be uh, all the results will be simulated against all the twenty or like twenty five scenarios what we have built within the tool. So we'll be getting all the results as an output. It could be like all the cost information, all the environmental impact. Once we get all the information, we'll be normalizing them as a integers because capital uh, the cost information could be in dollars. The carbon footprint could be in like a kilogram of like a CO2 and uh, land usage could be in acres because all these components are in different units. What we are trying to do is we are normalizing them into as equal integers and we use those in, uh, like numbers into the AHP ranking method so that we can easily compare as uh, integers. So <laughs> once we have uh, those uh, final numbers, once we have the final numbers, we have the ranking allocation, what we ask from the user upfront. So we, it could be like 70% imports to the cost. So we'll be using those 70% or 10% or 10% to be allocated against the total number of like numbers, what we have in the table. Once we have those allocations of all the 60 scenarios, what we have within the tool will be ranked against the importance what they have given upfront. So here is the scenario on the, the top five, so based on their importance, what they have given up front. So we are ranking the top five scenarios. So on the first column, you can see it could be top rank scenario one, two, three, and four and five. So if you see the properties on the middle, so it's, it defines the farm scenario. For example, in the top rank scenario, it's using organic bedding and it's using flush, flush systems. And uh, SL means like solid liquid separator of rotary drum screen. And final effluent is being uh, stored in the lagoon and they are using tanker for land application. And the last, we have like detailed description. So likewise, we have like a different rankings happening. So as a default, we are listing the top five ranks. And based on that, we'll be having the results in the, the results information table. And also we have the graphs. And also we have the flexibility to change the, the scenarios. For example, we have almost like 60. So we can use the drop-down cells to change the, change the farm information. And uh, the, the user can compare the different scenarios on the chart. So what we have learned during the like ranking allocation is that, for example, as I told, if you see the choice number one, here uh, the, the, the user has allocated cost of 78% and uh, environment and technology to 11%. If you see the choice one, uh, the black one has the, you see the red ones are the ranking orders for all the scenarios. For example, scenario one is sand storage with a tanker land application. And the scenario 1B is uh, the same sand storage pond, but they're using drag hose applic land application. So if you change the call, for example, in choice two, we are changing the cost to 47% weightage and environment to 47. And you see the ranking order, how it is being influenced. So that's what I mentioned. Even though we have all the treatment data available or the farm information, making the decision is like very complex because based on the priority or like a, like farmer's perspective, the additions are changing. So these are very important. And also if you see the third choice, uh, environment is very important for that farm scenario. So they have allocated 67%. If you see the ranking order, how it's being changed, right? So it depends on the farmer's perspective, how they want to see the best manure management alternative. So, so with these like AHP ranking, what we are understanding is that even though you have all the information, so each farm could be different. So we are giving the option to the user to allocate the like weightage according to their needs. So that is one of the advantage we are seeing with the AHP ranking method. And also here, uh, I have given the example just for the criteria. 
still we have options to prioritize for the sub criteria. For example, they can change, okay, uh, they can change for the capital cost, operating cost, even that could be done. So, but I have given just the example for the ma major criteria here. So, so once we have the top ranking orders, so, so like, uh, uh, as you see in the top five ranking orders on the table, so for the same, for five ranked scenarios, we are displaying the information in chat. For example, this is the LCA uh, output where uh, we are reporting like farm emissions and also like uh, in, uh, avoided impacts, which means that like it's like a background information, what's happening like in the upstream credit. So we are providing the carbon footprint, land usage, energy footprint, water, nitrogen and phosphorus footprint. So these are the five results, what we are uh, like six results, what we are exporting out of our tool. Sorry for that. I think there is some <laughs> technical error on that. Yeah. Yeah. So just to give an example, since we have a lot of data to compare, like uh, I didn't have much time for that. So here, for example, if you see from our tool, out of, we, are, we have almost like 20 technologies implemented in the tool. So for example, considering like uh, from anaerobic digestion to the lagoon storage, we are seeing the methane emission rates of uh, 74 kilograms per head per year to 4 434 kilograms of methane. So that's the results what we are seeing from anaerobic digestion to the lagoon storage. So if you compare those results with the like currently available literature, we are within the ballpark. For example, if you say Owen and Silver, uh, Silver report of like 2015, they have reported like two lagoons. They have like six months data. So they have reported around like six, three, 368 to like 100 kilograms of methane per head per year. And there is one more paper uh, like late um, April late um, like they have like very good uh, information. If you see the some of the methane emissions are like 170, 400, 342, 550 kilograms. So, so just we are trying to validate our results. So I'm just, I'm just yeah, giving up one information. <clears throat> so so coming to the conclusion. So since we have done this, uh, so we have built up the like background information for now. We are trying to validate the results, as I mentioned, for methane. We are trying to validate the results like for energy footprint or land usage. So we are uh, continuously trying to refine our tool. So and the, the, final, the next step or to finalize the dairy module. For now, we have like uh, 20 scenarios. Still, we want to include like membrane system or like a dissolved air flotation. We are trying to like expand our like treatment modules within treatment modules. And as I mentioned, like we are improvising the tool user interface and uh, like meeting with stakeholders, like what kind of output they are expecting. So we are in that process and uh, comparing our output results. And also uh, we plan to complete the swine model. So this is the background information, what we are performing for, performing for dairy. And the same thing we are planning to do for the swine model. Thank you. Uh, someone has, we have time for one question while we're changing over presentations. You might step in there. Sure. We can hold on to that. Does mm -hmm. anybody have a question? Is the Excel sheet available? The question. Oh. So the question is like, is the Excel sheet is available? Yeah, we plan to keep it open, but still we are uh, like in the development stage by uh, we'll be uploading on the internet. So, yeah. Yeah, so you're talking about the ranking order, right? Yeah, so for example, in, yeah, the question is like how we are allocating the ranking, like comparing like one component to other component. So in the AHP ranking, or maybe you can use a Likert scale method, like you have like a one to seven, like one is being the very less important or seven could be the high, highly important one. So likewise, in our AHP ranking tool, we have like total one to nine point scale like one, three, five, seven, and nine. For example, we are using those point scale to compare with like cost versus environment. So the user can select, okay, when you compare cost with the environment, they can use any one of the point scale. For example, if they use nine, that is extremely important. So if they use extremely important, the allocation would go to 80%. So then I guess the, the economic model from the issues model, are those all calculated or those Simplified. I, I can ask that later, but I think oh. there's going to be we're running some similar kind of operations, and the computing power is massive. Exactly. Yeah. So mm. This is where I was kind of curious what you simplified. Oh, no, no. The economic results will happen as a separate one. So we'll be using this ranking allocation 
to apply on the results. So we are just simplifying the ranking allocation here. There is no connection between these two. So the ranking allocation is completely different based on the point scale what we are providing. Thank you very much.